Yordan, I'd love you to tell us a little bit about yourself, um, what you're up to, and then give us uh, a bit of background as to how you got started. All right. Thank you for having me. Um, so my name is Yordan. I was born and raised here in Addis Ababa. I went to school <coughs> in Lisey, finished high school, and then went to the US. Let me just stop there and apologize for my voice. I have a really bad, bad sore throat. I usually sound slightly better and a little bit more scarier than this. <laughs> um, so background, yeah. So I went to the US for college and I ended up staying there for 15 years. I came back about 10 years ago, for those who are doing math. Yes, I'm in my mid 40s. <laughs> um, and uh, started Flawless in 2008 in Addis. And it's been running for, this is our 10th year actually and uh, it's been growing on a steady, steadily. <laughs> yeah, that's really, that's really. Um, when I initially started Flawless, there was really just one other company doing corporate events at the time. And like I said, because of my voice and my overall personality, I decided to just stick with corporate events and not do weddings because that requires more of um, emotional diplomacy and uh, Baby sitting a lot of emotions, which I don't have the patience for. <laughs> so I decided to stick with corporate events. Um, that's what we've been doing. So like I said, when we initially started, there was only just one other company in the market. And people were telling me, you must be absolutely insane if you think you're gonna succeed in this industry. There's, only, there's already one major company doing this. You can't compete with them, do something else. But I just said, I love doing it, so I'm gonna do just you know, one event at a time and see where it goes. And now, um, I guess we were one of the largest event companies in Addis, and growingly in Africa. So you, you grew up in Ethiopia, you moved away. Tell us a bit about the journey of, of coming back. So um, I grew up during the Dirk regime, and I see a lot of young faces here, but as much as a hard time, uh, it was a hard time for the country, but for those of us growing up, our parents protected us to a point where we had this romanticized that view and idea of what living in Ethiopia and grow growing up in Ethiopia was. We didn't really see the hardships. So when I went, I really went kicking and screaming. I did not want to leave Addis, but my parents said, no, you have to go and do your college there. Um, so after my first degree, I said, great, I'm done, I'm coming back. They said, no, 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 you have to do your second degree. I said, great. Did my second degree, I said, I'm done, I'm coming back. They said, no, 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 you can't come back. You have to get a bit of US experience, otherwise nobody will hire you. So that turned into starting to work, and then you get into debt, and then you know, you're partying, and you're paying your bills, and you're just living. But that, that, that feeling of wanting to come back to Ethiopia never left. I always felt like a visitor in the US. I never felt settled. You know, there was always something missing. So in the 15 years I was there, I never came back. Um, I was lucky enough to get married to an Ethiopian guy. And he also had similar background, and he also talked about wanting to come back to Ethiopia. So we got married, we had our first son. We're still talking about coming to Ethiopia, but you know, the day-to-day -day life is taking over. And then we got to a point where we had to make a decision about the education for our firstborn. We said either we have to move out of the house we are in in DC and go to the suburbs, or do we really start exploring the idea of moving back to Ethiopia? So we said, okay, let's start exploring. By this point, I've had my second boy, or second son. And I came back for two months just to see what it would feel like to visit Addis again. Because again, 15 years, I haven't seen Addis. I've heard there's so much construction, it's changed, it's not the city that you've grown up in, you really don't know what it looks like, you won't like it or you will like it. So I had no judgment. I just said, okay, I'm gonna go look at it. I came back with, the, with my two boys, and within two weeks, of being an artist, and I clearly remember the feeling. Driving down Bole Road, I felt, I, I went, ah, this is the feeling I've been looking for, the feeling of being home. That was it, there was no other tangible thing. It was just a feeling, uh, just a contentment and being happy of being somewhere where I belong. So I said to my husband, okay, I like it. I think that we can move, but let me see who would hire me. Okay, I have my MBA, I've had a bit of experience, maybe the AU and the ECA, because that's what everybody was talking about. And so I sat down and had a conversation with Yusuf of Ethio Jobs. I don't know if anybody knows him. So I went to him with my CV and I said, here's my CV, where can I get a job? 
and he said, wait a minute, I thought you liked doing events. I said, yeah, yeah, I did events in the US as a part-time basis, but you know, I'm a grown-up now, I need to do work, so who would hire me? And he said, no, he said, do events here. He said, go out, rent an office, start work. I said, no, I'm here on vacation. He said, no, still, do it, and because you'll have the pressure of having a rent to pay, I'll send you a couple of clients that could potentially hire you, just do the business. I left his office thinking, this guy's crazy, forget it. And then literally a few weeks after that, I'm having drinks with a friend, and he goes, listen, I want to put together um, a medical conference. Why don't you stay and do it for me? I said, I'm going back to the US in February, by this point it's like January, and his event was in April. So I said, I can't stay, I have to go back to the US. He said, what are you going back for? I said, well, I don't know, I'm just, you know, I have to go back, life is there. So he said, talk about it over with your husband, his name is Marab, and let me know if you'll be willing to stay. So I called my husband, I said, guess what, had the craziest conversation. Our friend said, I could, why don't I just stay and do his uh, medical conference? And my husband goes, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you have you're not coming back for anything specific, so why don't you stay and do the conference? I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, okay. So the small company that we had in the US on a part-time basis was called Flawless Events. So I said, all right. I had a friend who was also looking to start up a business here, so we said, let's share an office together. At that time, there was no VAT machine where you didn't have to have your own specific space, whatever. So um, I said, well, if I'm going to do a conference, if I'm going to do any kind of business that has a potential income, I might as well establish the company. So Flawless Events was born in Addis in February 2008. Amazing. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's... So you reference that registration and needing space and it's not easy at often setting up a business in Ethiopia and, and those that have, uh, have their own businesses may, may be testament to that. So when you set up and came here, if it wasn't that machines and, and venue spaces, what were some of the challenges when you were trying to get going over here? Um, so at that time, for those of you who've been here for a while, you know where the internet was dial-up. Uh, so we literally, especially when we were doing that first event and we were hoping to attract about 300 international participants and medical doctors to come and do some of the continuing medical education during the conference, I had to stay on top of email by dialing up from different places, which was absolutely insane. Coming from the US, I thought that was crazy. Um, at that time, the challenge was you know, explaining to people the value of the service. Because a lot of times, even to this day, actually, a lot of people will say, I'll have my office assistant do it. Why do I have to pay your company X amount of money to do something that we could do it, really? So it's really trying to explain the value of having somebody who their main focus is really just trying to m make sure you meet your objective during the conference. A lot of times, you know, people meet to either educate, to drive sales, to you know, come up with policies. So when you're focused, when you have so many objectives on your plate, in addition to that, to try to figure out where am I supposed to host it, who should really come to my event, how do I get the word out there, um, how would I have an impact, you can't, you can't do all of it together. So a lot of people just discount it and say, oh, oof, you know, my secretary will call the hotel, she'll book it, we'll fax all the letters, and then we're done. So, you know, it, it, it took really one event at a time for people to see the difference between an event that's organized by a professional versus one that's organized by your own office to say, okay, maybe there is um, value to this. And there was also lack of information as far as you know, how do you do your taxes? I don't know if there's better information now. I mean, we've learned through trials and errors. Um, you know, how do you renew this? Do you need a license for this? Do you need a Bagat Maragagaja for that? You know, a lot of it is still trial and error. What I've learned for me is, um, instead of going out and asking people, I've learned to go to the horse's mouth, as they say, and get the information firsthand. Because a lot of people filter information the way they get it. And then, you know, secondhand information is never as accurate as it would be from. So information on how to do business is still a bit complicated. Um, uh, well, what was no, the answer? Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay. Uh, specialty to Valley Gandish? No, Did water. Water? Yes, she. Water. We're really grateful that even with a, with a bad throat, you would join us and you would share. This is a, uh, we should be very grateful because 
Jordan could have easily pulled out last minute. And the fact that she's here just sharing her story with us, we're, we're very, very grateful for you're that. Welcome. So thank you. So you're given this opportunity to throw, you, 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 went, you went over that as if it was a very simple thing. Throwing an event for 300 doctors is probably not as easy as you make it sound. So from taking on that opportunity to, to throw this event to where you are now, 10 years down the line, what was kind of the, the growth trajectory? How did you share with people there was value in your service and what you were offering? And, and I, I've seen, the, I don't know if you went online and saw the, the, the clientele and the portfolio of businesses that Flawless, Flawless Events works for. This is like all of the top companies in Ethiopia and outside of Ethiopia. And so uh, it's no small feat what Yoadan has done to get to this place now. So I would love to hear a little bit about that kind of journey to, to become one of, one of the leading uh, events companies in the country. So there was no proper plan or strategic business plan or anything like that. I literally did that one event and said, Phew, that was great, we're moving to Ethiopia. And we did. <laughs> <laughs> Much to my husband's dismay, he's like, no, this was two years down the road, what are you doing? Um, for the first two years, I think I did one event out of a year. And I was absolutely okay with that. A lot of people get stressed and they think, oh, we hit the ground running. But literally we did that one medical event, that was it. And then I think we did another one in November. But what I did when I re initially started is, I would go to a lot of, and there weren't as many opportunities back then, but networking uh, platforms, but really there were parties that we would go to, and I would talk about my business. Though my father t told me, don't do that. Somebody would steal your idea. But I was like, that's crazy. So I would go and they were like, what are you doing here? Oh, I've started an event company. We do corporate events. Do you have an event coming up? I can do it for you. Like literally, I was a blabbermouth about my business. And one of the events I actually got to do, one of the first ones after that one was somebody literally at a party said, really, you do events? I'm trying to do a workshop. Do you want to do it? I said, yes, I want to do it. So it, it paid off to talk about it nonstop. Um, and then when, uh, you know, it w I think it was just a really good time. There were a lot of people coming back from the US and starting their own business. They were a little bit ahead than me. So because I had so much downtime, I would go with them to their business meetings and I would just listen. And you know, I got to meet Zamedene like that. I got to meet Yasser, like really influential people. And they would ask, you know, what are you doing? I'd be like, oh, I'm doing an event. I'm running an event business. So that kind of got the word out there for what Flawless is trying to do. Um, and then one event turned into two events, and a lot of it was really word of mouth. Um, and it was, it was somewhat easy because I absolutely love doing events. Even to this day, I'm so lost in the operations of doing events on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm losing track of like stepping back and saying, what do I do with this company? And I think that shows to people that we're not really in it just for the money, but rather because we absolutely love watching our clients get happy. And also just looking at the details and figuring out um, solutions on how to get things done. So we look at everything, the, you know, is the dot right, is the T, you know, ticked, every little detail, we don't leave it to chance. And that, that I've spent so many uh, nights up the entire night working on events. And at the beginning, I literally remember I used to cut bad badges, like, oh no, this is uh, you know crooked. Let me print that one again. And you know, the sun will come up, and I'm still stuffing badges. And this is at the beginning. So I did every little part of doing an event. And now that I'm blessed enough to have staff, like team members who work with me, like I can actually talk about the business not from oh I know you should do it this way, but rather from I've done it. It's, really possible to do it and you should do it this way. So it took time, two, three years, to really get up and going. And like I said, at the time I came in, there were not that many, a lot of companies doing events. So it was easy to, to be seen. Um, and I also focused on more international com events coming to Ethiopia so that I don't have to compete with the one established company that was here. Just to show that the pie is big, that you can take your part and, and you know, make that your expertise rather than try to take somebody else's pie. Mm -hmm.